For this module, we're going to focus on the different aspects of discipline. Um, so we'll go ahead and get right into it. Um, what we have on this slide is really just the basic definition of, of what discipline means in terms of a management um, perspective. And it really, you know, folks, just comes down to your behavior and your performance. Um, it's not really meant to be punitive. You know, when you hear discipline, it uh, you know, automatically has that negative connotation attached to it. Um, it's not necessarily, you know, a pleasant experience for anyone, whether you've been through it um, on the receiving end or the giving end. But again, it's not meant to be punitive. Um, the point of discipline, and we have two different aspects. You can have good discipline and poor discipline, as odd as that may sound. Um, the whole point is to realign, uh, you know, the value, the performance, and the behavior of your employees and those that report to you with the overall mission and vision of the organization and the culture of the organization. You know, and it all depends on how you approach it. So you can approach it from a standpoint of uh, with your employee, you know, I want you to continue to work here and here's what we need to change uh, because I think you're a really good employee. We just have to make a couple tweaks and modifications. So as we talk about um, the impact that discipline can have on your employee morale overall, you know, it, it's funny how everything we talk about in this course continually comes back and is tied to leadership and teamwork. So if you have great morale, um, all, uh, most of the time you're going to have less discipline issues. Um, things are going great. People are happy to work there. They're happy to work for you as a supervisor. Um, but if you're starting to see, you know, some low morale, if you're starting to see you know, some issues that you're experiencing, it may be a time to take a look in the mirror uh, because the leader really sets the tone, like we've said several times before. Um, and if you're having low morale within your department, you know, you're going to have low productivity. Um, you're going to spend your time putting fires out I and mean, not really being productive yourself. So everything, you know, comes back to leadership, back to teamwork. Um, and if we're starting to see a lot of discipline issues, we may want to look up the culture and the tone that we're setting within our own department. Now, it's great if you've experienced this, um, and hopefully each of you are like this, but we want employees to be self-directed. We want people to be real, you know, really motivated, really go-getters, um, and everyone really should exhibit, you know, some of these qualities listed for self-discipline, leaders and workers alike. So you as a leader need to ex exhibit these to your workers because, like we said a couple lectures ago or a couple modules ago, you know, they're watching you more often than you realize um, to really set that tone for the environment and for the work for and for the workplace and the department. Um, so as a supervisor, you really need to, uh, you know, one thing that can help you to kind of set the tone for this is make sure that you're being open and transparent with your employees. You know, explain as much as you can the reasons that we do things the way we do um, and make sure to just keep that communication open, that two-way communication there because that helps to work and build trust with your employees overall. So we talk about when discipline is uh, warranted, and you'll notice that last bullet there. Um, you know, when do you think it's good to be kind of firm and quick to respond, um, or why do you think it is to be uh, quick to respond when em an employee violates the rules? And it's really to just let them know that they're, they've really stepped out of bounds, to kind of course correct them. Now, it's, again, not necessarily the most comfortable thing you'll ever do, um, but it's one of those things serving in that, that type of role as a, as a manager or supervisor, um, to just respond firmly and quickly, um, but do it in private. Uh, because, again, we don't want to lose that level of trust that we've built with our staff, with our employees. Um, and remind them, you know, this is not meant to be punitive. I'm just trying to help you get on the right track or get back on the right track, help you make a course correction because I want you to continue to work for this organization. So just a couple things to keep in mind. 
I mean, as we move into, um, you know, if we do have to, uh, you know, criticize someone, remember to do that in private. Um, that's not something for the public arena. Again, you're going to really degrade the amount of trust that you have. Um, and instead of seeing yourself as a boss um, or, you know, as the director or the boss, see yourself more as a teacher or a coach because that is your actual role with your employees. You're there to help them develop as professionals um, in the workforce. So, you know, I hate the word criticism. Um, what you want to give is constructive feedback. Um, we want to keep that feedback loop open like we had talked about previously, and we want to make sure that we're giving constructive feedback to really help our employees grow as individuals. Don't try to attack them personally and try to keep as much emotion out of it as possible. Um, and oftentimes your employees will end up thanking you. Um, I've had this happen to me both on the giving end and the receiving end um, because it shows that you're interested um, in their development if you approach it the correct way. And it's all how and you sell and communicate it. So again, you may want to take it from the standpoint of, um, you know, our, I want you to continue to work here because you're a really great employee. We just need to make a couple changes to help you stay on that path. So again, you know, all in how you sell and communicate it, um, just kind of conveying to your employees that you are interested in their overall development and longevity with the corporation. So if you have to go down the road of disciplinary action, there's a couple steps you want to keep in mind um, listed kind of down here at the bottom. Again, not pleasant, uh, necessarily not a pleasant thing to do. We want everybody to be positive. We want everybody to work in a good environment, good atmosphere. But if you do have to do this um, and follow this disciplinary action, make sure to follow these steps and really work to get to the root cause of what is going on. And when you start to find yourself more in those executive type roles where you have maybe managers or directors that report to you, um, make sure that you're taking uh, a review of the documentation before that manager, before that director decides to terminate somebody um, to make sure that claims are legitimate, that all the evidence is there and that it's a justified termination. It's not just kind of a shoot from the hip quick, you know, knee jerk reaction um, to something that's happened. So, you know, just remember to make sure to review all the documentation. Again, like we said, um, or, you know, like I said earlier, this is so important to keep your emotions in check um, and to remain absolutely objective or as objective as you possibly can. Um, things can often get very heated. Uh, so we need to, you know, really let our emotions settle down bef before things start to get out of control. Um, this is another skill, uh, you know, just like several others that we've talked about, this is a skill you really have to work on. Um, remain calm um, and again, let those emotions kind of settle. You need to be the voice of reason. Um, you don't need to have a, a quick knee-jerk reaction to things. Make sure to take in all the information. Let that soak in and settle for, for a minute um, and let things settle down before we decide to start taking some action in hopes to keep things, you know, from going out of control. Now, I know we've said, um, you know, we should criticize in private um, and really how we should phrase that is we should coach in private uh, because there are times that you will need a witness when you do uh, have to uh, discipline an employee um, for a couple of different reasons but you especially want witnesses there or at least one witness um, especially when there's something like a termination that you're having to go through uh, for them, for your protection and for the employee's protection. Um, and often we want to look for somebody who's on the same uh, level as you. So we want a peer supervisor, manager, director, uh, whatever level you may be at, you want that kind of peer person there to serve as a witness. Again, just for protection for you and for the employee. 
Now, progressive disciplinary action, let me scroll back one, um, is often considered the gold standard out in the industry. Um, and, and you can see here, it's really just that list of logical steps that you take with an employee um, to work through uh, that process of disciplinary action. So we would start with kind of the informal warning um, or the informal talk all the way, uh, you know, if things keep getting progressively worse, all the way up to termination. Um, one thing I want to stress here and make sure that you, you know, if you don't get anything else out of this module, to remember documentation is everything. And you will hear that when you start to get out into the workforce, especially in healthcare. You know, you'll often hear people say, um, if it's not documented, it didn't happen. Um, you need to you know, make sure that you're documenting everything because that's going to be, you know, your evidence per se. If something were to happen, something were to come up, you can point back to the documentation showing what happened. So just remember, document, 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 um, and if it's not documented, it didn't happen. Just a quick note I want to uh, go over with disciplinary layoffs and suspensions. Um, there are some disadvantages listed here at the bottom. Just remember, you know, this is kind of a really touchy subject and you have to handle it very delicately uh, because disciplinary layoffs can often create damages that can't necessarily be prepared or be repaired. Um, so just keep that kind of in the back of your mind. And again, uh, you know, discharges or, uh, in, you know, you'll hear it fire, you're fired or involuntary terminations. Um, you know, give this a lot of thought before you uh, find yourself at this stage in the process um, because it is quite costly to terminate somebody. Uh, there's several reports out there that range from $7,000 all the way up to $30,000 just to advertise for a new positions. So, you know, while it's often um, necessary, just make sure you give this a lot of thought um, before you reach this stage of termination. Guys, I'm going to end uh, with that last slide. I'll keep scrolling through. Um, as always, if you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, we've got a couple slides left, and I'll keep scrolling through them. Um, but as far as lecture, we're going to end it with that one.